Uh, I've got a well-known face, uh, Simon Toffel. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the International Yoga Day celebrations here. It's great to be here this morning. I wish the weather conditions <laughs> were a little bit kinder to all the participants behind us, but it's great to see so many people here braving the weather yes. and celebrating International Yoga Day. Yeah, that shows some dedication, doesn't it? Well, I think that's what the last 18 months has been all about, hasn't it? Perseverance, yes. commitment, uh, adapting to the new conditions, and really just doing what's necessary to get on with life under these COVID conditions. Yes. And do you do yoga? Well, look, I was introduced to yoga, oh, I reckon probably 25 years ago right. by an Indian umpire that you might remember. Of course. Srinivasan Venkatrathavan. Yes, of I, course. I did my first two test matches with Venkat and um, he introduced me to yoga in the hotel room in Morocco. Okay. Um, and I found it really a, a fascinating experience. But as I said to the participants here this morning, I think over the last 18 months we've really learned that our health is our real wealth and to look after our positive thinking and our mental preparation and our mental health as well as our physical health. So um, yoga is an important part of that. Mm. Well you were uh, uh, voted as uh, the ICC's best umpire but uh, w what made you take the decision to retire from the game? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, it's probably it's chapter 16 of my book, funny enough, but <laughs> I left for two reasons, pretty much. Number one, I needed a new challenge. So professionally, I'd been umpiring for nearly 32 years um, and I needed to do something different that was going to inspire me and education and training is something that I'm really passionate about. And number two was my family, that I sort of missed my two sons yeah. growing up traveling the world and I didn't want to miss my daughter growing up. And I felt that it was time to allow my wife a bit more breathing space to be able to follow her uh, career path and spend some more time at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us a bit more about your book you're writing. Well look it's it's a book about transferable skills, it's about what we've learned in international cricket, about how to get to the top, how to stay there, but it's not about cricket stories necessarily, it's about preparation and teamwork, about how to lead with integrity, about how to you know be the best you can be mm -hmm. um, and also help people learn to understand that life's full of challenges, we're all human um, and those sorts of qualities that we've talked about this morning, perseverance, adaptability, uh, are, are really soft skills that are important to teach our young people and hopefully we can all be better as a result of those sorts of skills. Okay. When is this book going to be launched? It was launched about uh, almost two years ago now oh, is that right? by Surav Ganguly and myself in Calcutta. Uh, it's called Finding the Gaps and um, yeah look it's available online uh, so if you do a, a book search through bookdepository.com or Amazon you'll find it. No. Okay well uh, the cricketing world has changed a lot in the recent mm. times mm. and uh, uh, we have got the technology now the DRS system <laughs> and uh, in the days when you started I don't think the DRS was still available was it? No look I did my test debut in 2000 a DRS came in in 2008 and I finished international cricket in 2012. So I've seen both pre-DRS and post-DRS. It's quite fascinating. Yes. If uh, technology can deliver better results, uh, do you think that we should adopt the technology? Oh, look, I think we should always look for ways to embrace technology, providing it supports what we do, but it shouldn't replace what we do. And I think the integrity and, and the beauty of the game needs to be maintained. Uh, the umpire's decision, of course, is quite important. And wherever we can get more decisions correct, that's a good thing. But I also think that umpires should make decisions as well. And I think that's part of the sport. It's part of the beauty of our game. We have two umpires. We don't have a perfectly round ball. We play on a pitch that changes conditions over five days. Yes. And it, it's, a, it's an art, not a science, our game. Yes. Well, the thing is that uh, uh, nowadays the DRS seems to slow down the game a little bit. It does. Uh, Many of them are saying that uh, they should have left it to the uh, umpires to make their judgment and get, get on with the game. Mm. So is it being overused, do you think, DRS? Well, look, technology is a subject where there's no right answer. It really depends on how we want to incorporate it. And there's always a trade-off. There's always a price to pay for what you do in the game. And if you want more technology, that comes at a cost in terms of who provides it, but also in terms of time. And that's the thing. So you can analyse and review every decision if you like, but that'll take you a lot more time and you'll bowl less balls in a day. Yeah, yeah. And now they have introduced uh, Test Championship and yeah. as we speak, uh, the final is going on between New Zealand and India. Yeah. What do you think of the Test Championship? 
Look, I, I was part of the ICC Cricket Committee when we first debated it many years ago and was one of those people who voted for it because I think it's important that Test Cricket has context and that every match ca counts for something, towards something. And we've got a World Cup in the other two formats of the game and it's really important that we all play for an ultimate prize and to see a World Test Championship up and running is fantastic in my view. Mm. Well, uh, if uh, I ask you to put a finger on uh, <laughs> one or two uh, series, cricket series, where yeah. you have umpired, which has been probably the toughest, what would you say? Look, I think one of my first toughest series was when India started playing cricket against Pakistan again, I think in 2004, okay. 2003, something like that, when we went to Pakistan to do a test series and a one-day series. That was an amazing experience to see people like Shoah Bakhtar bowling against yeah. Sachin Tendulkar <laughs> um, and to see hard cricket played and, and the birth of MS Dhoni and Virat Kohli coming through was also um, especially uh, fantastic. But, you know, part of the beauty of officiating at the highest level is to see so many great, great athletes in so many great conditions um, in all parts of the world. It's, it's yeah. really a, a blessing. Yeah, uh, I know this is uh, probably a difficult question. Uh, you were also caught up in that uh, terror attack which happened when uh, uh, Sri Lanka was touring Pakistan. Mm. How was that experience? <laughs> Well, it was terrible, and, and you referred to my book before, and I've written a chapter about those experiences, and I hope that people get a real insight into what it was like to be under attack and to be shot at and to have people die in our vehicle. And it was a sad day for cricket, but also a sad day for, you know, the people involved. and uh, Especially the fans in Pakistan who are missing out on seeing good cricket. Well, yeah, look, the cricketing world changed that day, and people's lives changed that day, and some people didn't get to go home to their families. Many policemen were killed, unfortunately, and our driver was shot and killed, and our fourth umpire was seriously injured, and, you know, the, the cricketing world changed that day, and um, that's, again, a reinforcement here about yoga is, is that uh, our health is so important to us now, uh, our gift of life, we need to preserve and, and do our best we can with it. Okay. Simon, we all remember you as one of the greatest umpires the cricketing world has seen. Thank you. Thanks for coming here to support the International Yoga Day. Danyawad, shukriya. Thank you.